Hi everyone, and welcome to another Diary of a PhD student. The last time I said I was going away on a workshop for a couple of weeks, and I've been back for about seven days now, uh, as with any job when you go away for a period of time, be it on a training course or on holiday, uh, the world doesn't stop turning, so to speak, and the work stacks up behind you. But uh, pretty much cleared up everything that I needed to do. Uh, now, I've also managed to update the website, uh, put a new picture on the front page, the other one's getting a bit stale, uh, answer some more questions, of course, and now it's time to give you an update on what workshops are all about. Um, in astronomy and in PhD in general, there's sort of three layers of training. The first is the general training that uh, a university will provide, and that really is anything that any PhD or even even staff can use. So that seems like maximising your memory or, say, improving your reading speed or technical writing, things that you might not have done before or you think might improve your working conditions or the way you work. Then there's the more departmental training courses. So to me, that would be specifically astronomy training courses. They're normally focused towards first-year students, and they give talks on and lectures on topics in astronomy. So there's things like uh, maybe cosmology. What's the latest in cosmology? Um, or star formation or brown dwarfs or whatever it may be. Because uh, you've got to bear in mind that not everybody comes from an undergraduate background in, ast in astrophysics or astronomy. A lot of them can either come from physics or a mathematics background, especially if you want to do theory. Mathematics background is obviously very helpful. Uh, and then as you progress, uh, you have things like Journal Club, where we go through papers and learn to analyse papers, and also seminars. We have a lot of seminars, at least once a week, uh, norm normally at least once a week, but often twice a week. So we have a smaller talk and a bigger talk, and you really you sort of learn through other people's work, and they, they talk about what they're doing and the results they had, and you sort of pick up a general knowledge for all areas of astronomy rather than your very specific area that you're working on research. Outside of that, we have these external training courses uh, and workshops, and they tend to be not directed specifically at a PhD student always. Some are, but especially the one I went on or the ones I've been on in the past, they're much more general. And it will be a new piece of technology has come out or a new telescope has opened or a new piece of software uh, is available to, to, to use on your data. And they'll run these workshops to basically learn how to use it. You can go and they'll give you talks or teach you how to learn them. And they, you can be around people who know how to learn, use them. So if you come across any problems, you know how to get in contact with them. And the one I went on uh, a couple of weeks ago, specifically was something called the EVLA, soon to be actually the JVLA, uh, which is the Expanded Very Large Array, soon to be the Jansky Very Large Array. There was actually a post on the website about that, so people got to name it. Uh, and this is an up updated version, expanded version of the VLA, which is a very large array, which has been around for a while, and that's a radio interferometer. And I'm going to probably give a talk on that on, on itself, because it's a really interesting topic, especially especially from my personal point of view, because I work on them. But it's a really interesting technology, and the, the way things work is, you know, it's, it's really quite clever. But we need to learn this data that we're getting now is much, much, much bigger and much more complicated, because it's so much more advanced than the old system. And it's new software as well. This new software that's coming out is, is really the future. So it was a chance to go and learn all about this new data and how to use it and the best way to use it, especially the best way to use it. I mean, you can read through a cookbook and, and a manual and, and figure out how, how things work, but it's not always the best way. You can go with people with a lot more experience and say, oh, yeah, you can do it that way, but maybe this will be a lot more efficient. It'll be quicker or we get better data, you get better results. So the, this was a, quite a long course that I went on. This was two weeks. They normally last maybe three days to a week, uh, but this fell into two parts. And the first part was talks, lectures, and sort of explaining how things worked and, you know, what you could do with it, what were its capabilities, what were the capabilities of the, of the new telescopes. Then later in that week, we moved on to actually putting this, what we'd been taught into practice. So we went through some tutorial examples, downloaded some practice data, which was... Uh, 
set up and uh, ran through. And if you come across any problems, you weren't sure about anything, there were people there to, to help you out and explain why you did something. Because it's always very important to ex understand why you're doing something. You, you can go from A to B in the script, but then if something goes wrong and there's no round to help you and you don't understand why why you're doing such a, such a thing or putting in such a command, then it, it really struggle. You can really struggle to figure out what went wrong. So it's nice that if you don't understand someone, someone's there to explain it to you. And that was the first week. Uh, and then, because it was such an extended one, we actually had a weekend free. And this is another part of workshop, which is probably secondary, but it's also very, very important, especially when you're early in your career. And that's to, that's to meet people. There's lots of people that you're going to be working, especially your niche area can often be quite small, and you're going to meet the same people over and over again. So it's, it's nice to meet the people, find out what they're working on, you know, where, where they've been, what they think is good, and get different ideas, because it's, it's important in science to exchange ideas and to, you know, find out other people's opinions and points of view. Uh, and it also gives us a chance to go and actually see the VLA, which, which was great. I've actually put some photos up of it on Facebook, all the different areas. We've got to go into one of the issues, which is absolutely fantastic. A uh, really memorable experience. Um, so, yeah, go check out those pictures on Facebook anyway. So after the weekend, it was back to the serious business to the workshop. And for the second week, we were reducing our own data. Using the techniques from the first week, and then applying it to, to our own data sets. So people, everyone there had applied for observations and got, got them taken. And now we, we were going to use what we'd learned with the support of the staff there. And that's, that's really great because the tutorials will teach you the underlying concepts of what you need to know and how to do things. But there might be something very specific to your data, which isn't covered in that, or isn't very explained very well in the manual or one of the cookbooks. And the staff there who are already very knowledgeable and have used it, are very experienced with it, might be able to help you and point you in the right direction. Uh, or maybe something's running really slowly when it shouldn't be, and they can then go away to the designers and say, you know, th there's obviously a problem here. Because it's, it is a very much a two-way process because they can't account for every single bit of science. The idea of science is you're trying to do something new. And maybe that involves using those telescopes in a <clears throat> more unique way. So then they can, they can look at it and then go away and decide what is important. Maybe they can improve features or streamline things or add extra features which they think would useful, be useful based on what people are trying to do at this workshop. So, so it really is a good learning experience, uh, and, and that lasted four days, um, and, and, it, and it was a good experience. It, it really is helpful to have that support around you rather than trying to figure everything out on yourself all the time. Uh, so it was definitely worth the trip, and it was very enjoyable as well as, as very educational. Uh, the next thing we have coming up is uh, the National Astronomical Meet up in Manchester. Uh, so if you have any questions about that, please let me know. Uh, all, all the usual places, sort of Facebook, uh, you can post on, uh, under this video, send in a question. On the forums as well, I've started adding some new news on the forums. I might add a new section to that. Um, I've also got some ideas about displaying actually how we reduce the, this type of data and showing you what it involves, because it is very much a mysterious process. Don't worry, I'm not going to give you in the detail of exactly all the things they told me in the workshop. It would be very much a, a skim view uh, and, a, and a summary, just to sort of show you what what the processes are involved because I mean you only see you hear me talking about the start and you hear me talking about the end but the middle is always pretty much a black box but as usual any questions all the usual places ask an astronomer the color UK uh, ask an astronomer on Facebook ask Astro UK on Twitter uh, always great get, get in contact me with it if especially if I'm on the road because it always pops up on my phone and YouTube as well, Ask an Astronomer UK, that's, that's proving fairly popular. Uh, and we've got some more talks coming up soon as well, so uh, any questions, let me know.